All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. Now, today I was able to watch Spider Man Lotus, and honestly, I loved this film. I have a full review for you guys. There was a person in the comments who was asking me to go more in depth with characters, story, and I'm going to try to do that for you guys. Um, I'm going to try to let you guys know what I thought about each character, and what makes them great, what was bad, and there was not even a lot that was bad. There was a couple things that I have, of course, nitpicks because I'm a Spider-Man fan. I believe that every Spider-Man fan has some nitpicks with every Spider-Man story. So that's what I'm going to let you guys know, the nitpicks, but mainly how amazing this movie was and why I recommend you guys watch this movie before you guys just completely say no. I'm not going to watch this movie because of the past. And honestly, yes, watch this movie. Now, of course, I'm going to give you guys my review. Now, of course, the movie does start off with Peter Parker narrating his past and future. So you get to see a lot of past events and future events that do happen in this film. Well, he discusses missing Gwen and honestly, you know, failing to save her. Failing to fight the goblin. And honestly, he does an amazing job in this movie grieving. But one of the things I did realize was Harry Osborn and Peter Parker grieved completely the same way. Now, of course, Harry was grieving more about his dad than Gwen. But honestly, the way they mentioned and showed the death of Gwen Stacy was just phenomenal. There was so many callbacks to the comics and it was exactly the same thing you guys would basically read and pull out from a comic book. Now, of course, this movie was beautiful. Harry Osborne, Harry, when they both grieved, they grieved. You felt it. You felt the emotion. All the emotion that came out from those actors was just phenomenal and I loved it. Harry Osborn, of course, in the story, does take the pills. Now, in the comics, Harry Osborn does do drugs. And a, what, a lot of the Spider-Man content that comes out these days does not want to mention that. And for me, I feel as if, honestly, Harry Osborn's story with the drugs is a good story to go off of. Because Harry suffers. He, his dad just treats him like shit, honestly, and always tells him he's a failure and he's never going to live up to the Osborne name. And this movie really shows that it just honestly haunts Harry Osborne and he can't get over it. And that's one of the things that honestly, st like struck me. I forgot honestly about Harry Osborne doing the drugs. I remember reading about it, but I never really see Harry Osborne doing that in any content. And this movie was perfect on showing that. Every time he was mentioned, he was grieving, or when he was shown, he was shown grieving. But then when Gwen brought up, or sorry, MJ, when she brought up the drugs, yes, yeah, she mentioned it and she was sad that he was doing it again. She knew that he was taking the drugs again. And he honestly thought that's how he can fix everything, honestly. He honestly thought that he could fix that. He could fix every single one of his problems. And if he leaves the earth or if he dies or loses himself, maybe that's not such a bad idea. And honestly, that's how people see themselves these days. And Harry Osborn takes a step from being happy and and joyful and then goes down with the grieving process after Gwen and his dad dies and you know he just completely falls apart and by the end of the movie he does get closure with it he is com not completely fixed but Harry Osborn is now better he knows that Peter is there for him he knows that MJ is there for him and personally it felt so good to finally see Harry Osborn at his full potential. Now, of course, not fighting or anything, but emotionally with the character was just phenomenal. Now, let's go with Gwen. Now, at first, I thought Gwen was really quiet, and I thought she was going to be like that the whole entire movie, but honestly, it was a great way to start the film with her acting like that. 
Um, yes, I believe that this movie did a phenomenal job with Gwen. Yeah, she went from being quiet to you get to see what she went through, what how much she loved Peter and how much she enjoyed being with Peter. And the fact that Peter wanted to ask her out and he did, but she said the only way... I will go on a date with you is if you win one of the stuffed animals from one of the um, games at the um, circus. Or I don't think it was a circus. I believe it was the fair. Yes. And uh, yeah, that just sounds like Gwen Stacy and Peter tries so hard to win. I don't think it said he ever won it actually, but she still went on a date and was so happy that she got to go with Peter. And every time that Peter was brought up, a smile came onto her face and Believe it or not, just those small little details are fantastic and phenomenal for Gwen Stacy herself. And yes, I love Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy, but I think this Gwen Stacy did take it home as a really, really good version of Gwen. Now, I don't know the actor's name, I'm sorry, the actress's name, but, you know, she did a phenomenal job. And yes, I will look up all of the names, um... But yes, Gwen Stacy was phenomenal. Her role was perfect. It wasn't overused. And the fact that Gwen got her just got so much to do in the film and wasn't too much at all it just felt right. Now let's go with MJ. MJ kind of bugged me at the beginning because she, when she went to go see Peter at Gwen's grave, um, she was like, nobody will go out with me. And I was like, yeah, that's MJ, but I felt like they were trying to push it too hard. But I thought that they were trying to push... Yeah, I thought they were trying to push it way too hard. But as her character got more spread out to the film and she got more screen time, you kind of understand what MJ was going through. Her whole life, her parents, or her dad specifically, treated her like crap. And, you know, she wanted to be better. She wanted to be known rather than just being a mystery, you know? And so she does that, and you can tell she's very cocky with her look. She's very cocky with all the guys. But yet, she just does a phenomenal job of making people feel bad for her. But then her realizing that she, yeah, she did screw up, and she needs to stop blaming everything on herself. But she needs to start worrying about Peter more and worrying about Harry. And that she does have Harry and Peter and that they are there for her. And, you know, maybe just two friends will work. And it, it, just MJ in general. Of course, we all love MJ. But, you know, she has to have a good story. And this story was perfect for MJ. She finally realizes that... You know, she's not the center of attention, and she won't be for a long time, but yes, she can still be known, and we don't get to see that a lot in, in films or shows at all. Like, for the 2004, 2002, 2007 Spider-Man films for Sam Raimi, she does get annoying. She cheats a lot. She wants to be just be the center of attention, but she never realizes, yeah, that's bad, and, you know, people are going to start disliking it, and they're going to start realizing yeah, that is a bad idea to start doing that. And yeah, Peter goes off on her in the beginning of the film. And I feel like it was correct. But I also feel like Peter was also in the wrong. And it does go over that in the film. And I love it. Now, let's go off with the villains um, quickly. Um, Goblin, perfectly used. I really like the actor from Norman Osborn. I didn't realize they were going to actually show Norman. I thought Harry Osborn was going to be the Goblin. And I honestly just thought that he was going to be the goblin in this um, movie. And it turns out he was not even close to being the goblin. Um, Norman Osborn died and was the goblin. And I feel like people knew he was the goblin before he died. Because in the news, um, when the guy's speaking, when he's explaining, oh yeah, Norman Osborn or the Green Goblin was left there. And so Norman Osborn was left by Spider-Man and Spider-Man fled the scene. And... It, it, it he acts like it's happened before and personally i really do like that i really do like that norman was not overused um the costume was pretty cool for norman it wasn't my favorite you can tell you know it was a fan film when it came to that but i wasn't really realizing in the film that his mouth was moving you know 
Um, it just seemed like the hel- it was a helmet or something instead of a mask, like a skin tight mask. But overall, you know, that's okay. I really do love the fact that Norman Osborn and the Goblin were used and that it haunted Peter, but not only Peter, he haunted Harry as well. And that was just one of the best things that was in the film. Peter and Harry both struggling and being haunted by Norman. And of course, Norman's the Goblin and the Goblin was haunting uh, Peter. And Peter doesn't even realize that, you know, it wasn't his fault towards maybe almost the end of the movie. He blames it on himself the entire time. He blames Gwen's death on himself. And I mean, if you were Spider-Man, would it, I believe everybody else would. You know, you would blame yourself because, you know, you couldn't catch her. You couldn't save her. And... It was, you know, it's perfect the way they both grieved together, you know. And even though they grieved by themselves, at one point they grieved together. And, you know, they had their fights, but I loved it. Now let's go with Peter Parker, okay. I loved him as an actor. Um, Warden Wayne, he did a phenomenal job as Peter Parker in Spider-Man. Now, for his character, the way he grieved, he went off on MJ, he went off on Harry, and you know, he realized he was wrong for going off on MJ and Harry, but not fully to almost the end of the movie. He thought he was in the wrong, you know, he blames himself for Gwen Stacy's death, and he almost kills the goblin in this film. I think the closest we've ever seen him go to kill, um, like almost kill somebody, because I thought he actually died when he choked him and dropped him. I thought he died, but then he's like, I'll see you in hell. And so... Maybe Peter did kill Norman, and hopefully Gavin, like, says more about that, because if Peter did kill the Goblin and Harry finds out, yeah, that's not gonna turn out good, and Harry's gonna be pissed. But we're not even gonna get a sequel to this movie. Um, It's okay. This was a one-and-done, and I loved it. It was perfect. Towards the middle of the film is when Peter realizes he was wrong. He goes to visit the kid. Now, this kid is sick. I think he has cancer. Um, and he is, he's going to die pretty soon. And so he's such a big Spider-Man fan. He collects all of the newspaper articles. He collects every single thing about Spider-Man. And yes, we get to see that in the 90s film. We get to see Spider-Man visit the kid. But in this film, it was most of the film he was at the kid's house. And I loved it. Every little thing the kid said, he just showed Spider-Man everything, but at one point, Spider-Man loses it, and he tries walking off, because he doesn't believe the kid should, like, love him and believe in him, because he doesn't think he's a hero, and he tries explaining that to the kid, and then he walks out of the room, and the mom has to explain why he looks up to Spider-Man, because Spider-Man saved thousands of people, and he needs a role model in his life, he needs someone to look up to, And that's when Peter realizes, holy crap, you know, it probably wasn't my fault or was my fault, but still, I have saved thousands of people and people need me like this kid. And he realizes and lifts all that baggage off of his chest that he wasn't in the wrong. It was not his fault. And, you know, he couldn't do anything about it. And it was such a beautiful story between the kid and Peter. They had a great relationship Spoiler warning, I should have said that at the beginning, but, you know, this, the fact that Peter shows him his face in this film, it was perfect. It wasn't corny, it was perfectly set up, and I honestly really did like it, and I really do want to see more when it comes to Peter unmasking himself because the kid is the only one who knows that he is spider-man gwen never knew mj never knew and harry doesn't even know he's spider-man nobody knows not even at may and the fact that the kid was the first one to find out is amazing now i do apologize you guys might hear my playstation overheating and yes That's because I am playing Fortnite while I am reviewing this for you guys. Now, this film was by far a 10 out of 10 for me. Now, I often rate the Spider-Man films a 10 out of 10 or like close to a 10 out of 10, you know, maybe an 8 out of 10. But I've been re-watching all these films and I love them, yes. I love every Spider-Man film. 
But this film, by far, knows what it's doing. It wasn't jam-packed. Honestly, they, it was mainly grieving. It was reflecting on Gwen Stacy's death, losing people, um, Norman Osborn's death, and it didn't bring in too many characters. Harry Osborn, MJ, the kid, of course, and Spider-Man were the main ones, were the main characters that were alive. Um, of course, Norman and Gwen do die, and they're big characters in the film, but they didn't overdo it with trying to, oh yeah, Gwen's dead, or Norman Osborn's dead. It was perfect. Now, there's a lot of grieving in this film, and there's a lot of talking, so would a kid watch this? Maybe, honestly, if you can get your kid to watch it, cool, but I doubt it. My cousins won't even like sit still, so I don't think they would want to watch this, but it is still an amazing Spider-Man film. Um, at the beginning of the movie, we get to see the Shocker fight, and I didn't realize it was going to be right at the beginning, so it's it shocked me, <laughs> no pun intended, well actually it was intended, but yes, um, the Shocker fight was actually really cool, the choreography was, I'll give that maybe like an 8 out of 10, it wasn't perfect. Sorry, my mic cut out, but yes, um, the choreography was not perfect, but you know, it's a fan film and what Gavin did with this film, um, what the actors could do, it was the best I have seen in a fan film ever. This is honestly in my top five. I will put this in my top five for Spider-Man films. Um, maybe even my top three because it, we got finally get to see what happens after Gwen Stacy's death? The Amazing Spider-Man 2 showed it, but, you know, it it was only a little bit, and Andrew Garfield did an amazing job, of course, but I think Warden Wayne takes number one on grieving about Gwen. Um, grieving for Gwen is, you know, something that, honestly, you don't get to see a lot, and personally, I love the fact that Gwen got so much in this film, but it wasn't overused. Grieving for a character can be overdone, but the way they use it in this film did not overdo it at all. Now, let's move on to one of my favorite parts. The costumes and the, like, the wardrobe, you know, what they wore in the film. Now, if you look what Peter wears, if you look at what Peter wears in uh, the comics, yeah, that's what Warden wears, okay? He he fits a perfect Peter Parker, and I love it. Um, if you want to cosplay as these characters, yeah, this is the perfect way to do it. And uh, personally, this should be a good reference to go to if you're wanting to do a modern but amazing look for your cosplay. Um, for these characters and I really did enjoy this film. I enjoyed every part. All the clothes they wore was phenomenal. You know, MJ had her own fashion sense. You know, it was great. Um, Peter Parker wore a bunch of different um, clothing in this film and it was phenomenal like normal and I feel like Gavin knows what he's doing. Now, Towards the end of the film, you think it's going to be the end when he's visiting um, the kid's grave, um, Tim's grave. Uh, little Timmy. Um, when he visits his grave and Aunt May's grave and Gwen's grave. But no, it actually keeps going and it does amazing. Um, Flash Thompson is something I wanted to mention. And now, of course, I like Flash Thompson, but... You know, this film was perfect for him. Um, he wasn't a bully in this film. It was the Flash Thompson you get to see in the comics after, you know, high school. And him going into the military and him learning and having respect for Peter Parker. And personally, him helping out MJ, the pep talk he gave MJ, was perfect. And then by the end of the movie, Flash Thompson has a going away party. And they all want Peter to go. But, you know, Peter can't do it because he's right there, but he hears the sirens, hears police, and he has to go, you know? He has to go save whoever's in trouble. And personally, I don't mind that. Peter Parker always will miss something because he is Spider-Man. And Flash Thompson, you know, his party was one of the big things mentioned in this film, by the end of the film, it does happen. We get to see the party. 
But, you know, I really did like this Flash Thompson. It wasn't overdone. I thought he was going to be overdone. He wasn't. It was beautiful. Um, Flash Thompson, they knew what they, you, they, they knew what they were doing with Flash. And I would like to see more of that character if they would ever, maybe make some short films or something. Maybe make, you know, if Gavin ever decided to make a sequel. That would be phenomenal. I would love to see another film like this, but to continue on and have more Spider-Man action. Because, yes, it was beautiful. And it was amazing when you got to see the fights between the villains and Spider-Man. You know, even though they were choppy, I loved it. I wish we could have saw more of the Green Goblin fight, which actually a lot of it was leaked online a while back. And, of course, there was no effects to it. But, um, yeah, it it did look good. And, you know, there's a lot you're going to have to focus on when you watch this film. You know, um, choppiness can be annoying for people. But for me, this is a fan film, you guys. Um, there's not a lot you can expect from it, but it brings out more than you're expecting. It's a two-hour film. Yeah, usually fan films are not even an hour long. Um, and this one reached two hours and two minutes. That's for the credits, of course. But still, it was perfectly length. It ended at the right time. And like I said, guys, this is a 10 out of 10 film. Now, overall, the story, the plot, you know, it was perfect. You get to see everyone grieve over Gwen. Gwen is dead in this film. Norman Osborn is dead. And, you know, grieving over that, it shows plenty of sides of what people would feel, you know? Harry Osborn taking the drugs again because he lost his dad. And he still loves his dad, even though Norman put him through hell. And, yeah, honestly, it was perfect to put Harry on the drugs again because a lot of people can, like, connect to Harry because a lot of people would do that. They would go back to drugs. They would go do that stuff, you know? And, it, you know, it's not bad when you show a character like that. It's perfect because you can connect to a character and, emo like, emotionally connect, mentally connect, and it's, it's perfect. Now, emotionally, with Peter Parker, you know, a lot of people can connect with him, too, because Peter blames everything on himself. And a lot of people these days blame themselves. Personally, for me, I have blamed myself for a lot. I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. Neither is Spider-Man. Neither is Peter Parker. And Ward and Wayne, again, phenomenal performance by every actor, but Ward and Wayne, I think, stole the performance. Um... You know, Warden, as Peter Parker, Peter Parker suffers because he blames himself. And everyone does blame themselves at one point. And you can connect with this character when he does that. Because, you know, we're not Spider-Man, but we, are, we can be Peter Parker, you know. Cosplayers, you know, we love to wear the masks because it excites people. And, you know... We, we love it. The smile on the kid's face when we wear the suit. or It just makes people happy. People need that hero in their lives. And that's what Warden Wayne does. You know, it embodies a hero. You know, it embodies a personality. You know, we, like, personally for me, I wear this suit because it does make people happy. I love wearing it. And you don't have to worry about your weight. You don't have to worry about how you look. Because when you put that mask on... All the kid is going to see is Spider-Man. You know, of course, you might get called names, but Spider-Man is Spider-Man. People love the character. They need that hero. Even just seeing him for a second, you know, just shows how much people love the character. Even like, oh my gosh, it just gets a smile. And this movie perfectly explains that on why Spider-Man needs to be a thing. Why he can't quit. Why? And honestly, if you like are a cosplayer, you will know. Even if you're not, like if you see a character on the side of the road, you know, like from a toy store or somebody dressing up as it, you're going to have a smile on your face. And the embodiment of the suit is phenomenal. You put on that mask and, you know, the kids see Spider-Man. And Spider-Man's a perfect character to do that. Spider-Man might not be perfect in real life. He might not be a perfect hero. But that's why we do it. That's why we wear it. And the movie perfectly 
goes off of that. You know, the movie shows why Spider-Man is needed. And it's it's just a beautiful thing. Now, I know I have gone off and rambled about that a little bit. But this movie just does so much. It's not overpacked. It's not overdone, you know? And one of the things, though, is they show a lot of movie posters because they go to see a movie in the beginning and Peter Parker can't make it. Um, but it's it's funny to see the Fast 9 poster, all the 2019 posters when this film released in 2023. It, it That bugged me a little bit because, you know, my, eight, my ADHD and my, like, I have... OCD about this kind of stuff like in 2007 or 2008 my bad um the dark knight was released right and you get to see a spider-man 3 poster in the background well that's closer to this year it is kind it's kind of true you know bench warmers came out in 2005 2004 was spider-man 2 they had a poster for spider-man 2 up in the movie um in the movie store you know the rental store and you know it was kind of accurate um, but yeah, that was like one of the only things that bugged me. Um, but let's now let's go over the things I have nitpicks about. All right, now there's only a couple. Like I said, the movie posters in the film. But like I said earlier, also the choppiness. You know, I mean, I think Gavin could have did a tiny bit better on the fights um, and the webbing. Um, I know it's not easy to edit webbing, but you see it on TikTok all the time. It's actually kind of it, it could look better. You know. The editing was perfect with the swinging. Um, I could barely tell it was uh, CGI or whatever you like to call VFX. Yeah, VFX. Um, you can barely tell, but it it was perfect. It didn't it, it didn't really need to be too much because it's a fan film. But like I said, it bugged me. The editing was perfect, but the webbing editing was you know a little. It kind of bugged me because it kind of just messed with my eyes, and I was like, I've seen ten times better. But again, it's a fan film and I can't complain a lot. Now, one of the things that also bugged me, like I said, was MJ. You know, sometimes at the beginning, you know, she was worrying about herself, only about herself. But then at the end of the story, like, it, it totally fixed it. I wasn't bugged anymore. And the only reason I bring it up that I was bugged about it was because yeah, that's how I felt at the beginning. I wanted to let you guys know you might be bugged about it. You might not, you know. Now, as you're watching the film at the beginning, there's some Easter eggs, okay? You're going to see on the license plate, on um, the license plate, yeah, there's a comic, The Amazing Fantasy, you know? And you get to see a, a lot of, um, you know, scenes that they wanted to replicate, like when uh, Warden Wayne's Peter Parker goes up to and finds the robber, you know, that killed, um, that he let pass on him in the wrestling station and then you know um kills uncle ben he goes chase him down it was trying to replicate the uh raimi movies 2002 when he um gets to the robbery you know the killer of uncle ben but it was perfect there were so many easter eggs from different movies i'm gonna make a separate video on that because this video is already too long and i doubt you guys are gonna watch this entire video if you actually have watched the entire video let me know down below, like drop it, drop it down below. Let me know you watched it. Let me know if you like these uh, videos. Um, personally, I'm going to keep uploading them because I do like reviewing these films and there's a bunch more fan films and fan series that are coming out and I'm super duper excited for those. But this movie does an amazing job with story, plot, everything, all the characters. They were phenomenal. The weather, I have to add. That was my favorite part of the film. There was so much rain. <laughs> and if you know me, um, which not a lot of you do, um, I love rain. I love cloudy skies. I love when, you know, shit's dark. Um, and then you bring into, like, a light, a brand new day, you know. Like, it's clear as day and, you know, you think everything's good. But they added so much rain. All the editing for the rain was so phenomenal. The swinging scenes in the rain. Yes. It was great, and I loved it. There was thunder and lightning in the film. Again, I loved it. But, yeah, that the weather, phenomenal. But that's all I got for you guys, honestly. I know one of you guys asked to see, like, a full, detailed plot synopsis and all of that. Honestly, I've never done that before, and this is, like, the longest video I've ever done. Um, 
And, you know, I'm not really good at that kind of stuff. I just take notes. And I just wanted to release a review for you guys right after I watched it because I was excited to see this. I've been waiting three years to watch this film. And, again, I loved it. I loved the trailers. It had so many good promotional ideas, promotional stuff they released. And I loved it. Gavin, Warden, the rest of the cast and crew, you did phenomenal. I love you guys so much. I hope there's a sequel. If not, it's okay. But, yes, Warden, you know, he's my top three. He's in my top three for my favorite Spider-Man. Um, that's live action and animated. I kid you not, that's how I feel about this film and I feel about the characters. Now, of course, I'm going to have more Spider-Man Lotus videos coming out for you guys. Easter eggs. Um, I really wanted to review me getting, like, watching the film, but I didn't get to see Gavin's post until after the film, so, yeah, I wish I would have recorded myself watching it, because I was really happy, but yes, I loved it, costume designs were great, the entire movie, 10 out of 10, you do need to watch this, I recommend, yes, you guys, more videos coming out soon, but that's all I got for you guys, if you guys Please, if you guys want, just please subscribe. Um, I I would really, it would really help me. I'm trying to make some money, you know. I really don't want to be working a fucking nine to five. Or sorry, my bad. Um, a full job, you know, nine hours. Um, I would rather be making YouTube videos for you guys. I would rather make the entire, you know, Spider-Man review series. You know, I would love to do that for you guys. But we gotta have subscribers, and yeah. Make sure to like the video. If you guys like this video, let me know what you guys thought about the movie, what you thought about the video, and what you guys thought, you know, about the entire Spider-Man Lotus thing. If you guys, you know, if you didn't want to watch it, let me know why you don't want to watch it, okay? That, it would mean a lot to me. We got to have some conversations. Again, if you guys have any ideas for new videos, drop them down below. I would really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Love you all.